Hey guys, it's your tech girl Mary and welcome back to our YouTube channel. For today, pag-uusapan natin yung isa sa pinakabagong flagship phone ng Samsung, which is their Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4. Yes, we are finally giving it a try. Alam nyo naman, the past few years, Z Flip series lang nila yung madalas nating pinag-uusapan, which is what I have rin naman right now. So in the next few days, makikita nyo yung full review ng Flip natin. But for now, yung Fold muna since ito yung mas nauna kong ginamit sa Malaysia. But again, this is not the type of phone that is for everyone. So kung sa damit, may one size fits all, dito sa phone na to, it doesn't really work like that. This is how the box looks like. Manipis lang siya. There's really not much to get. Especially if flagship phone yung bibili nyo. Unless na lang you will be pre-ordering. Again, if you pre-order, most of the time marami talagang freebies. And may mga discounts kayong pwedeng makuha. By the way, yung color pala na meron ako is the beige one. Which is online exclusive lang. You are basically getting three things. The panundot, the USB Type-C to Type-C cable, and of course, the paper works. I know for a phone costing for around 100,000 pesos, medyo disappointing yung makukuha natin, which is why I always suggest pag-isipan mabuti before pre-order ends dahil dito talaga tayo makakabawi sa pera na binabayaran natin. Okay, so first, pag-usapan natin yung kanyang redefine design. Actually, in terms of thickness, magkasingkapan lang po yung Z Flip 4 dito sa Z Fold 4. But, it is half as tall and much lighter. Actually, guys, when it comes to choosing between yung Flip and the Fold models, pag-isipan nyo mabuti kung paano nyo ba prefer i-carry around yung inyong phone for everyday. Alam naman natin that the Z Fold 4 fits best in a bag or a jacket pocket. Whereas, the devices like the Z Flip 4, they are more appropriate sa mga may maliliit na bulsa, maliliit na bags, like mga clutch. So yeah, in terms of these two smartphones, there's really not much argument. Madali mong ma-identify kung ano yung dapat na para sa inyo. Anyway, bitawan na natin yung flip because we will be talking about this phone on our next video. In fairness naman, it resists fingerprints very well. And since a beige coloring nga yung meron ako, hindi masyadong obvious yung mga scratches sa kanya. In terms of you know, mga keys or anything sharp na nakalagay din sa loob ng bag ko. You would also notice guys na yung kanyang aluminum frame is flatter now at medyo mas polished. Which is again, I told you guys sa first impressions ko ng flip that I like it a better than the Z Fold 3's design. Although, as you can notice, yung camera bump natin is a little bit plumper than the prior version. I guess yung mga new sensors ng ating camera really needs a bit more, you know, space compared sa kanyang predecessor. Which is why when it is on a flat table or any flat surface, medyo annoying talaga siya because it wobbles a lot. The Z Fold 4, guys, weighs 260 grams, which is indeed a very chunky phone. So compared, guys, sa iPhone 13 Pro Max na 240 grams and Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra na 229 grams, medyo may kabigatan talaga ito. Although, it is 8 grams lighter than the Z Fold 3. Okay yun, pero hindi siya masyadong ramdam actually. They were able to made this happen guys dahil mas wider na yung ating phone kaysa sa mas matangkad siya which really makes yung ating front display more usable now. Also, kung mapapansin nyo yung gap doon sa ating hinge medyo mas makapal than our predecessor. I just want you guys to take note that the Z Fold 4 is IP rated for water only but not dust. So, ingat-ingat pa rin tayo sa pagdadala ng ating mga bagong Fold 4 or even the Z Flip 4 sa mga, you know, areas na may sand, like of course, the beach. By the way, since nasa usapang display na rin naman tayo, pag-usapan na natin yung kanyang pinaka-cover display. Katulad ng sinabi ko, the exterior cover display is slightly wider, making it a little easier to type on. And yung internal folding display naman niya guys, medyo slightly smaller yung bezels niya ngayon. 
and the slightly different aspect ratio which is just a little wider and less tall. Now, when unfolded, kumbaga kapag siya ay naka-tablet mode na, medyo marami nagtatanong if the crease improved or not. Actually, depending on your viewing angle and what's on your screen, it's not very noticeable most of the time. Depende talaga to sa ginagawa natin. It's something that I got used easily, guys, and even when I could see it, hindi na ako masyadong nababother sa kanya. Not even when my thumb ran over it while gaming. Isa sa nagustuhan ko sa pagka-folding phone na meron nitong Z Fold 4 compared to other, you know, brands na meron ding folding smartphones, you can open it, shut it, or leave it at almost any angle in between. Kaya naman yung flex mode talaga namang achievable sa kanya. Anyway, both yung kanyang external and inner display has the 120Hz capability which is, I think, ano, the same with its predecessor. So whatever display you use, so very smooth ang ating animations and scrolling. Now let's talk about UDC or also known as under display camera. Kung mapapansin nyo dito sa ating pinaka camera for the A-roll, it's not really that obvious pero again, meron tayong camera or front camera should I say, na hidden na dito sa kanyang display. Samsung rearranged guys yung pixel layer on top of it to try and mask it better. Surprisingly, it blends incredibly well and with the right content guys, you will really have a difficult time finding this camera. I really don't have much complaint about it pero ito yung tipo ng camera na talagang last resort ko na. Yung tipo na hindi ko talaga siya gagamitan unless it's very necessary. Ang ngayon, pag-usapan natin yung mga bago niyang features like yung pinaka-obvious, yung task bar. As you can see, we now have a few applications located here. Honestly, it's one of the best things they've done here sa bagong Z Fold 4. It's very tablet-ish. Kumbaga, kapag kayo ay gumagamit ng iPad or any Samsung tablets, it really makes the overall user experience so much better. Actually, may task bar naman tayo before, but it's more of a side bar and it's more hidden. Itong bagong task bar relocated sa ilalim. It's on by by default, which is kind of a change, guys, from the sidebar behavior na nakita natin sa full tree. Pwede nyo rin itong i-turn off entirely kung hindi nyo siya gusto. So, it really is optional. And sa totoo lang, ang kinaganda naman talaga ng pagkakaroon ng isang folding smartphone, katulad ng fold series ng Samsung, is, of course, their multitasking experience. Ito yung tipo ng multitasking na parang wala nang bukas. I mean, achievable naman ito sa kahit na anong klase ng tablet but then again, having this kind of small device na may ganitong screen real estate, okay na okay. May more ways tayo to split the screen, but this time around, guys, pwede tayo mag-start splitting the screen of you by swiping with two fingers from the bottom or sides of the screen. Actually, if you have a specific workflows na ginagamit, you can switch between a few applications constantly and this can really, guys, save you a lot of time. Siguro the only thing I don't like is as of the moment, um, hindi ko alam kung there are a future updates. May mga applications lang talaga na hindi masyadong optimized dito sa tablet or smartphone na to. Katulad na lang ng Instagram guys, it feels a little too small sa cover screen. Kaya naman kapag in-open ko siya sa middle or the main screen na merong 16 by 9 window, medyo awkward tignan. Pero pwede naman itong palitan sa settings para maging 4 by 3 but then you won't be able to see the full content of some post na tinitignan natin. So yes, I'm still waiting na magkaroon tayo ng tablet app version ng Instagram. It's not really entirely the fault of Samsung, but more of the application. Now, the flex mode. Ito, isa to sa mga paborito ko rin dito sa Z Fold 4. Kapag half-closed yung phone, pwede natin i-tweak yung ibang user interface ng ibang applications like Netflix or YouTube. And surprisingly, guys, it's very handy. Isa pa ang kinagusto ko sa flex mode, guys, it really gives me that extra flexibility whenever I take photos. Yung Z Fold 4, guys, minsan nagiging impromptu tripod siya for its camera, making it easier to take photos alone. Ngayon, speaking of the camera, 
Actually, there are a few improvements na talaga namang ikinagulat ko. Katulad na lang na yung kanyang main sensor gets a bump from 12 megapixels to a 50 megapixels now. And yung increase from 2 times to a 3 times telephoto lens. In terms of image processing guys, kung mapapansin nyo naman sa ating mga photos, medyo ganun pa rin. Medyo mas punchy yung kulay and vivid yung mga colors natin and sometimes a little, you know, over the top when it comes to HDR mode. Okay, at maganda yung 10 megapixel selfie camera doon sa ating cover screen, even kapag nagtatake na tayo ng selfies at night. Siguro yung 4 megapixels UDC or the under display camera, medyo ganun pa rin yung experience ko, katulad ng nakita ko sa Z Fold 3. When you open the camera application, kung mapapansin nyo, there are a few buttons na hindi masyadong familiar sa atin or hindi masyadong familiar sa iilan, lalong-lalo na if first time yung makakakita ng isang folding device. As you can see, meron tayong capture view button sa pinaka-upper left corner niya. You get to see your shots straight away after taking photos or videos. So, makikita nyo lang yan the whole time sa inyong kaliwa until you close the camera application which is again very handy. Now, we also have of course the settings, the flash timer, the ratio, the motion photo, effects, and of course, yung ating cover screen preview. When you click this or yung button na nasa pinaka kanan, yung pinipicture nyo gets to see what you are actually capturing. Or kaya naman kung mag-isa ka, you get to see yourself when using the rear cameras. Which is, uulitin ko, very handy na hindi rin kayang ibigay sa atin ng ibang ordinary flagship phones. Anyway, sa pinakakaliwa sa gitna naman, dito natin ma-access yung kanyang mga zoom toggles wherein pwede tayo makapag-zoom up to 30 times digitally and again, 3 times for the telephoto lens. Just like the S22 Ultra guys, itong device na to can also shoot up to 8K of video resolution. 8K is something that I don't use for everyday but it's good na meron tayong ganitong option sa kanya that makes the device more worth it. So yes, this time I can indeed truly say already na yung cameras ng ating Z Fold 4 is a very flagship. I know naman it's not all about the megapixel count, katulad ng cameras na meron tayo last year which is the 12 megapixels as its main camera. But again, sharpness wise and again yung user interface ng overall cameras natin dito sa Z Fold 4 makes it more convenient to use now. So, totoo lang, performance-wise, there's really not much to talk about dahil I can say that this phone really has top-end specifications and delivers excellent performance. Wala po tayong Exynos version ng mga bagong flip and fold devices ng Samsung. So, we really are getting the best chipset from Snapdragon. Yung Qualcomm chipset na meron itong device na to had no trouble guys when it comes to handling even yung pinaka-intensive graphical settings na nilalaro namin. Yung pinaka-base model ng Z Fold 4 comes with 256GB of storage pero again, wala tayong SD card expansion. So, if you are planning guys on loading this phone with a lot of content, you might wanna spend a little bit more to get the 500 112 gig and now here in the Philippines may option na rin tayo to get the 1 terabyte. Now, it's finally time to talk about the battery life. Actually, ito yung pinaka big deal or yung pinaka issue ng iilan. That's why they still don't see themselves buying the fold or even the flip. Hulitin ko, there is no power brick that comes inside the box. But again, if you will be pre-ordering, may kasama siyang freebie. It still has the 4,400 mAh, which is the same one na nakita natin sa Z Fold 3. It is also capable with the maximum of 25 watts charging speed. So yes, medyo na-disappoint ako ng konti kasi Uulitin ko, when it comes to the Z Flip 4, may improvement tayo sa battery. But with the Z Fold, 
wala. Throughout my week, guys, na ginagamit ko yung Z Fold 4, especially in Malaysia, I was able to manage to get through it until bedtime with at least 50% of battery life remaining. Roughly 5 to 6 hours of screen on time per day. Honestly, you can get more with other Android handsets or even with the new iPhone 13 Pro Max. Wala naman ako naging issue with battery life, but one thing I don't like is the charging speed. It only supports a maximum of 25 watts, wherein nakakuha tayo ng 50% of battery charge in 30 minutes. Hindi naman exacto, but again, around that number. Being able to use other Android devices na may mabilis or may mas mabilis na charging capability than this flagship phone, it really kinda disappoints me. Again, we don't want to spend that a lot of time charging on a smartphone priced at this point. If I were to give you guys my verdict on this new folding device from Samsung, for me, itong device ito is really more of a luxury item in terms of the mobile phones. Katulad ng sinabi ko on the first part of this video, it really isn't for everyone. So yes, it can sometimes feel like it's an overkill for basic tasks and you have to live within the boundaries of the Android tablet app ecosystem. Pero again, if you agree on those terms naman at okay to sa inyo, lalong lalo na if you are coming from the very first fold or the fold um, phone na second generation, then you will definitely feel the upgrades. Sa tingin ko, since pang-apat na ito ng generation ng kanilang folding device, and it's not really the future anymore since ito na, nandito na sila, it's here, this is the now, and all I can say is safe naman ng bumili. Anyway, ang dami ko pang gustong sabihin, pero ang haba-haba na ng video natin. But if you guys have questions more, I'll try my best na sagutan yan sa ating Z Flip video. Again, it's your tech, a girl Mary, and I'll see you in our next video. Bye, guys!